of light which make nighttime beautiful. Dawn is a sign of life. On Easter morning at dawn, Jesus lived again. His victory was more than just a victory over sin. It was a victory in which he brought forth something significant from the darkness of his death into the dawn of his new life. Easter is not real because a preacher proclaims its presence, but because men are consoled and redeemed by the life of another. Easter is available in its demand and its peace when we remember with light and water, with grace and quiet hope, with evening vigil and early morning hours, the Christ who comes to life again. Easter dawn redeems the world from darkness. and Catholic Communications Office for the Diocese of Springfield present a very special Easter morning Chalice of Salvation program live from St. Michael's Cathedral in Springfield. salvation as we gather here at St. Michael's Cathedral to celebrate this joyful Easter Sunday of hope and new resurrection. Our celebrant today for our liturgy is Bishop Joseph McGuire. Celebrating along with the bishop is Father Richard Meehan, myself, and other members of the diocese. And we hope you'll celebrate and worship with us as well this morning. After our liturgy, we'll be having also a special segment, an interview with one of America's perhaps most popular religious songwriters and artists, Brother John Michael Talbot. So we hope you'll stay tuned for his sharing and also for his music after our liturgy. Then at 11.30 this morning, we'll continue our celebration and reflection on Easter with the diocesan program Real to Real. So we hope you'll stay with us for the next two hours as we celebrate on the Chalice of Salvation and then at 11.30 for Real to Real. Let us now process to the altar of the Lord in this time of hope and celebrate and worship together. Our opening song is Hail the Festival Day, number 109. <clears throat>
of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And also with you. My brothers and sisters, on this beautiful day of Easter, the day of the Lord's resurrection, as we come together to pray and worship and to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us first look into our hearts to acknowledge our faults and to ask the Lord for forgiveness and for strength. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray on this Easter morning for the life that never again shall see darkness. And let us pray that the risen Christ will raise us up and renew our lives. God, our Father, creator of all, today is the day of Easter joy. This is the morning on which the Lord appeared to those who had begun to lose hope and opened their eyes to what the scriptures foretold, that first he must die and then he would rise and ascend into his Father's glorious presence. May the risen Lord breathe on our minds and open our eyes, that we may know him in the breaking of bread and follow him in his risen life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people in these words. I take it you know what has been reported all over Judea about Jesus of Nazareth, beginning in Galilee with the baptism John preached, of the way God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good works and healing all who were in the grip of the devil, and God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him finally, hanging him on a tree, only to have God raise him up on the third day and grant that he be seen, not by all, but only by such witnesses as had been chosen beforehand by God, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and to bear witness that he is the one set apart by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets testify saying that everyone who believes in him has forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord.
I shall live and recount his deeds and recount his deeds. <coughs> This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This is a day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice, let us A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. Since you have been raised up in company with Christ, set your heart on what pertains to higher realms where Christ is seated at God's hand. Be intent on things above rather than things on earth. After all, you have died. Your life is hidden now with Christ in God. When Christ our life appears, then you shall appear with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. With you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Early in the morning, on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been moved away, so she ran off to Simon Peter and the other disciple the one Jesus loved, and told them, the Lord has been taken from the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. At that, Peter and the other disciples started out on their way toward the tomb. They were running side by side. 
But then the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He did not enter, but bent down to peer in and saw the wrappings lying on the ground. Presently, Simon Peter came along behind him and entered the tomb. He observed the wrappings on the ground and saw the piece of cloth which had covered the head, not lying with the wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the disciple who had arrived first at the tomb went in. He saw and believed. Remember, as yet, they did not understand the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. It's a great joy on this Easter day to see St. Michael's Cathedral Church filled with people to celebrate the Feast of Resurrection. Last night at the Easter Vigil, I couldn't help but say what a beautiful week this has been for me. It began last Monday night in Pittsfield at St. Joseph's Church where we celebrated the Mass of Chrism. And then on Tuesday night, we came to the Cathedral Church for the Chrism Mass. And Holy Thursday, we had the beautiful ceremonies of the feast, the commemoration of the institution of the Feast of the Holy Eucharist on Holy Thursday night. On Good Friday, with great solemnity and with much sorrow, We remembered the passion and death of Jesus. And last night we had opportunity to pray in the vigil mass, making ready for this wonderful, this glorious day. Yesterday noon, we had the blessing of food here in the cathedral sanctuary. And we had many families bring their Easter baskets with homemade breads, and we had many little children here. And one little boy got into one of the baskets and into one of the eggs, one of the real eggs, and he had a difficult time taking the shell off. And I sat beside him, and as he took the shell off the egg, the only thing he gave me were the shells. And then after a while, he looked at them and he he decided that I shouldn't have those, so he took those back from me. But at the end of the blessing of the food, I asked the children, I said, now, does anybody here know an Easter song? And a little girl raised her hand and she came up here in the sanctuary and she sang, In Your Easter Bonnet with all the frills upon it, and everybody was delighted to hear that rendition. Today, all over the world, really, people of Catholic and Christian faith are commemorating this feast. And what it says to you and to me is that the Lord we worship is a Lord who is not dead. He is a Lord who lives. And where does he live? He lives in you and in me. And the beautiful thought this morning that we have from the scriptures, especially from the Gospel of St. John, is that the Lord we worship is a Lord of 
great compassion and mercy and forgiveness. And the greatest illustration of this is that in John's version of the resurrection of Jesus, the first person at the tomb, the first one to see the empty tomb and to have some idea that the Lord had risen was Mary Magdalene. As we know, in the time of Jesus, Mary Magdalene was a symbol, you might say, of sinfulness. People who were close to the temple, people who were very religious people, did not want to be in her company. And yet the scriptures tell us so beautifully that when Jesus first met Mary Magdalene, and when people were standing around to see what his reaction might be, immediately he embraced her with love and her tears fell on his feet and he said to her, Mary, because you have loved much, much is forgiven. Go in peace and sin no more. What a great revelation this is for you and for me to know that on this Easter morn, on that first Easter morn, the very first person at the tomb was this woman rejected by so many and yet embraced by Jesus because her heart was filled with love. You and I, so often, in spite of our best resolutions, I suppose, fail in love. Sometimes it is our impatience, our misunderstanding, our unwillingness to walk a little distance with people who really need our compassion and our mercy. That's why the notion that Christ lives in you and that he lives in me and in other people, this notion of faith is what helps us to recognize the dignity of every person, to overlook the faults and failings of people who might have a different point of view than we have, and to embrace every person with love. The secret of peace. The way to peace begins with you and with me. We can't hope really for peace in the world unless first we have peace and compassion and love in our hearts. So today as we celebrate this liturgy of the resurrection, let us make this one resolution that we will strive to the best of our ability to recognize the dignity of every person, no matter who he or she might be, that we will strive mightily to see the Lord Jesus living in every person, because as the scriptures tell us, we are each one of us the handiwork of his hand. And if the Jesus in me recognizes the Jesus in you, then we rise above all superficial, all external considerations. We pierce more deeply into the heart of our brothers and sisters in the human community, and we have no difficulty embracing everyone with love. I want on this occasion to thank Father Meehan and all of the cathedral staff and our organists and our musicians and our cantors, everyone who in any way has contributed to the beauty of this week. It is the holiest week of the year. It lifts us up. It gives us reason for hope and reason to go on no matter how difficult things might be. And now, as we do on every Easter Sunday, I would like very much to invite the children in the congregation to come up. Now, they may not come. They might be too afraid. But at any rate, 
If the children would like to come up here so we can see who you are and maybe have a minute to visit with you, I invite you now. If you're afraid to come, we'll understand. Does anybody want to come? I think some are coming. I think some are coming. Oh, that's great. Come right up here and sit right down. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Hi, Margaret. Hi, Bill. Sit right down. Oh, that is so good. Right up here. Oh, isn't that? Easter Bunny, isn't that, is that for you? That's for me? Oh, thank you, I have an Easter Bunny. <laughs> I can't eat it till after church. <laughs> sit right down here. Do you want to sit right in here, doll? Right in here. Now, can anybody tell me what happened today on this day? Jesus rose from the dead. Can you get it any better than that? That's beautiful. And can you tell me, after Jesus rose from the dead, what did the apostles think? Did they understand, or were they a little bit confused? Did they really know that Jesus rose from the dead? No, no they didn't. What did you want to say? Nothing? OK. Well, can anybody tell me now why we love every other person? Because who lives in every person? Jesus. Jesus lives. That's right. And that's why we have to love everybody, don't we? Right in here, dear. Oh, over there, okay. That's why we have to love everybody. Now, does anybody know an Easter song that you'd like to sing before we go? Do you? Do you want to come over here and sing it with me? Okay, what, tell me what it is. Huh? Do you remember the Easter song? How does it go? Okay, let me help you, all right? We'll s let me just help you and we'll say a little prayer on this day and that will help us to celebrate our prayers better on Easter Sunday. Let's all say together, Jesus, I love you because you are so good to me because you gave me my life and you give me my health. Help me to see you in every person and help me to remember that when I love other people, I love you. And then do you want to all stand up and, and say, on television there are people who are sick at home and they couldn't be here for church today. So I think they would be very happy if you wave to the people at home and say, Happy Easter. Happy Easter. And I love you all. I love you all. That's beautiful. God bless you. Thank you very much. Aren't they great? Thanks very much for coming up. You were great. Okay, you can go back now. I hope they can. Can you find your way back all right? Do you remember where your seat is down there? Okay. Okay, Elizabeth, do you want to go back to your daddy? Okay. All right. She wasn't too anxious to go, huh? Okay. Dear friends in Christ,
Through the mystery of Easter, we have been buried with Jesus in baptism so that we may rise with him to a new life. Now that we have completed our Lenten observance, let us renew the promises we made in baptism when we rejected Satan and his works and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. So I ask you, do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's sons and daughters? I do. Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be conquered by sin? I do. Do you reject Satan, father of sin and prince of darkness? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. God, the all-powerful Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit. He has forgiven all our sins. May he also keep us faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. notice that I waited until after the homily to invite the children up. I used to invite them up while I was preaching, but I had no success. Nobody paid any attention to me. <laughs> now I bring them up afterwards so I won't be too upstaged. We rejoice in the glory of Christ's resurrection and we lift our voices in prayer to the Father of us all. We ask you to respond, <clears throat> Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christian people throughout the world, that this celebration of Christ's resurrection may deepen our faith and lead others to follow our crucified and risen Lord, we pray to the Lord. For world and national leaders, that the hope of Easter morning may inspire them to work more diligently for world peace, we pray to the Lord. For all those who suffer in mind and body, that the risen Lord may comfort and strengthen them we pray to the Lord. For all the newly baptized and those confirmed by the Holy Spirit, that their lives as Christians may manifest the joy and peace of Christ to all they meet, we pray to the Lord. For the faithfully parted, especially Sister Helen 
Aloysius, Sisters of St. Joseph, Grace Grinberg Funes, Loretta Turgeon, Carl Pfeiffer, Selma Fahey, Edward Cote, Rose Waldron, Lawrence Sullivan, Elizabeth Long, that as they have died with Christ, they may rise with him and share the glory of the kingdom he has prepared for us, we pray to the Lord. Great is our joy this day as we celebrate the glory of your son's resurrection. May we always remember that sin and death have been overcome and that we are called to the life of the kingdom. Hear our prayers, for we have made them known in the name of Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice as your hand, to the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the church. Lord, with Easter joy, we offer you the sacrifice by which your church is reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. 
Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We praise you with greater joy than ever on this Easter day when Christ became our Paschal sacrifice. He is the true Lamb who took away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death. By rising, he restored our life. And so with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. We come to you, Father, with praise and thanksgiving through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him we ask you to accept and bless these gifts we offer you in sacrifice. We offer them for your holy Catholic Church. Watch over it, Lord, and guide it. Grant it peace and unity throughout the world. We offer them for John Paul, our Pope, for Leo, our Bishop, me, our unworthy servant, and for all who hold and teach the Catholic faith that comes to us from the apostles. Remember, Lord, your people, especially those for whom we now pray. Remember all of us gathered here before you. You know how firmly we believe in you and dedicate ourselves to you. We offer you this sacrifice of praise for ourselves and for those who are dear to us. We pray to you, our living and our true God, for our well-being and redemption. In union with the whole church, we celebrate that day when Jesus Christ, our Lord, rose from the dead in his human body. We honor Mary, the ever virgin mother of Jesus Christ, our Lord and God. We honor Joseph, her husband, the apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew and all the saints. May the merits and prayers gain us your constant help and protection. Father, I accept this offering from your whole family and from those born into the new life of water and the Holy Spirit with all their sins forgiven. Grant us your peace in this life. Save us from final damnation and count us among those you have chosen. Bless and approve our offering. Make it acceptable to you, an offering in spirit and in truth. Let it become for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. The day before he suffered, he took bread in his sacred hands, and looking up to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, he gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me.
let us proclaim the mystery of faith. the memory of Christ your Son. We, your people and your ministers, recall his passion, his resurrection from the dead, and his ascension into glory. And from the many gifts you have given us, we offer to you, God of glory and majesty, this holy and perfect sacrifice, the bread of life and the cup of eternal salvation. Look with favor on these offerings and accept them as once you accepted the gifts of your servant Abel, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the bread and wine offered by your priest Melchizedek. Almighty God, we pray that your angel may take this sacrifice to your altar in heaven. Then as we receive from this altar the sacred body and blood of your Son, let us be filled with every grace and blessing. Remember, Lord, those who have died and have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, especially those for whom we now pray. May these and all who sleep in Christ find in your presence life, happiness, and peace. For ourselves, too, we ask some share in the fellowship of your apostles and martyrs, to John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all the saints. Though we are sinners, we trust in your mercy and love. Do not consider what we truly deserve, but grant us your forgiveness. Through Christ our Lord, you give us all these gifts, you fill them with life and goodness, you bless them and make them holy. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. with thanksgiving for the blessings of this holy week and with faith in the resurrection of Jesus and his life within us, let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
is me when the blood and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. Father of love, watch over your church and bring us to the glory of the resurrection promised by this Easter sacrament. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. Bishop McGuire, on this Easter Sunday morning, the parishioners of St. Michael's Cathedral Parish, the people of God in the Diocese of Springfield, and those who are joining us this morning by way of the media of television, extend to you a joyful wish for this happy Easter season. May the resurrected Christ strengthen and console you as you continue to raise the cross of Christ in our midst and announce to us the hopeful message of eternal life. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bow our heads as we pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you on this solemn feast of Easter, and may he protect us against all sin. Amen. Through the resurrection of Jesus, God has granted us healing. May he fulfill his promises and bless us with eternal life. Amen. We have mourned for Christ's sufferings. Now we celebrate the joy of his resurrection. May we come with joy to the feast which lasts forever. Amen. May I ask the priest to join with me now as we, we pray that God will bless you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we go in peace again, I, I thank Father Dakota for his wonderful work this week. The ceremonies were just so beautiful and just a great reassurance in faith. Thank all of you who are here for being with us because you really make this feast come alive. To all of you who are watching us by way of television, you are in our thoughts and prayers. We love you. God bless you always. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.